high level wrestler against almost everybody else, they have such a noted advantage in the yeah. clinch. Like Daniel Cormier and Stipe Miocic this weekend. Yeah. What a I mean, Dominic Cruz was such a we're very fortunate to have a guy that knowledgeable mm. in in because Dominic's knowledgeable about basically everything. He started mm. out as a wrestler, but he understands MMA as good as anybody that's ever talked on the mic yeah, about MMA. He's very clued up. So when he talked about like he showed me some stuff that I hadn't caught about Daniel's uh, giving up the the underhook so that he could limp arm and then Stipe would run right into the right hand and they had really? it all timed out. Yeah. Okay, I've they, already broken down the fight. I was just I was already lit by that time and I was crazy. <laughs> I was yelling off my face just like wow dude when he connected and then he yeah. hit him i don't even know if i said anything because i remember i was going like i thought it was gonna like, be five rounds five it was rounds almost like there was a deja vu moment yeah. like the world just changed Shit. like Holy what fuck. did he just knock him out i don't know and it was so out? close like oh and Dead john annick on the ground john annick stands up there's a picture, picture i put on instagram yeah. that is a beautiful picture because yeah. they've been working together for so long when john annick stands up and he and dc fuck? looks at yeah. him when they're looking at each other it's beautiful that, look at that picture come on man because who the fuck else is a two-time world champion in two divisions and also a commentator yeah. currently and a great one working two jobs god i love that yeah, guy man what a and good I like guy the fact that he's chunky as well because yeah. he just like chunky's a nice way of putting it well, no nah, honestly he's chunky <laughs> <laughs> if you know, that was a girl what would you call her thick <laughs> he a thick boy <laughs> like he doesn't DC. give a fuck man this ain't even fat shaming that's the nah. goddamn two division champion i was talking he's to ian he's nutritionist he says like 246 but he doesn't move like 246 i was like yeah 100 percent. so it's deceptive yeah you look at him like even Mark Hunt, he's another guy like that. But last um, Saturday, the way he was moving. Well, was Javier Mendez gap. was talking about it in camp, and, and yeah. so, so was Bob Cook. They were telling me after the fight, they go, dude, yeah. at heavyweight, he's just knocking everybody out in training part. It's you almost forgot about Strike Force. How about that? They yeah. forgot about Strike Force. They forgot That's about why... undefeated Strike Force, fucking Grand Prix heavyweight yeah. champion. Tossing out Burnett, Woo! Bigfoot dropping him, all that kind of shit. I was yeah. like, and that was Barnett with five rounds. And he yep. wasn't even like, he was early, in, that was early in his MMA career. Yep. So I was like, you guys don't understand. So I thought it was going to be DC putting them against the fence, grinding them out for five rounds, and still beating them up, for like fucking them up, and back and forth, but knockout in the first round. That was just crazy. Out of nowhere. Yeah. Crazy. I thought if, if DC was going to win it, what was going to happen was they were going to get into the second and third, and they were going to start getting tired, and DC's wrestling was going to take over. Yeah. I the thought it was going to go five rounds yeah. unanimous to DC, but. I felt like he had to somehow or another wear Stipe out a little bit before he gets takedowns and yeah, get him push down. Push him against the fence. Yeah. I thought I, that would be the smart thing to do. But I thought it was real dangerous standing up because Stipe's knocked out Junior Dos Santos, and he's knocked longer. out Alistair Overeem, knocked out. Fabricio Verdun with one punch. I mean, mm. you think all the people Stipe's knocked out, you go, damn, and DC's coming up as a light heavyweight? Yeah. DC Only time we ever seen out. DC hurt was with Rumble, right? Yeah, I well, so, John yeah. Jones, obviously. John oh, Jones yeah, head well, kicked yeah. him and knocked oh, that's him out. Knocked him out. Yeah, yeah, can't forget that. Yeah, John that's Jones interesting too, man. capitalized brilliantly on a tendency. Yeah. You know, he knew that DC they had this tendency. About it. Yeah. yeah, leaning. Mm -hmm. I saw and that. what's interesting is that Dominic Cruz explained this to me as well, is that this is how DC prefers to set up the single. Mm. And that he prefers to lean, lean in on that side. Lean in towards his right side and then dive in on the single. That's his, his preferred technique. Yeah. He's very strong at dragging you to the ground from that position. Mm, so agree. he has a tendency. And Everyone John does. At every, every level, even John Jones, myself. When I was watching my fight, I've only seen it once. It was after the fight, rewinding. I took about an hour and a half to finish watching it, just rewinding playing, drinking with my friends, whatnot. Because they understand, like, I just like to be by myself and just chill, so they're just doing their own thing, and then we're just playing games. But I watch it to see what I did right, and I enjoy it. I was like, okay, this is what I did good, blah, 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 blah. But then I see, how, if I was fighting me, how would I fuck me up now? Ooh. Yeah. So I, yeah. yeah, like, That's and I, 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 I can see it, certain things, like, okay, this is, I need to work on tendencies, certain tendencies, and change it up, confuse people, scramble them. Some of the things I was doing in that fight, I've never done in training. Because, example, elbow pads. We don't. I haven't really worn elbow pads in training. Just knee pads. I was using that um, ong bak elbow to set up how to close a distance. And I was watching. I was like, where did I learn that from? I don't know. Like you watch. I did it probably three times. I'd use the fake ong bak elbow to close the gap, and I'd gallop in and catch him with a right hand or something. But I never like certain certain things like that were, were things I did good. But then. I can't really say the kind of thing do you that think, did bad. But that, yeah, don't, don't yeah. do that. <laughs> but do you think that maybe that when you learn, it's almost like you're learning words. 
mm. like in these words or techniques, and then combinations or sentences. And then in like having the mastery of all these words, you just see a new sentence that you could say. Yeah, I was like, You already oh, know how nice. to throw those, obviously, yeah. even though you don't do it a lot in sparring. You just see there's something he's doing, you're like, you know what, this is what, it, I'm going to, this, and then come in here. and Yeah, there was, like that one was nice, but there was one in my last fight before that in Arizona. Um, Sean O'Malley throws this like spin and then the head kick. Mm. And in the fight, I was like, it feels right. <laughs> Boom. First time I ever landed it. And it <laughs> caught him on the back of the head. I was like, oh, good. And I just kept on moving with it. Yeah, when Yair Rodriguez 360 roundhouse kicked BJ Penn in the face, I was yeah. like, oh, you got to be fucking kidding yeah. me, man. Because I was crazy. always wondering, when are we going to see this? I've done one. I knocked, a heavy, I, knocked him, I, knocked that, I knocked down a heavyweight with it, like a tornado kick. <laughs> and I learned that about a month and a half before. Shout out uh. to um, David. David he's, the, he's a Taekwondo champion from New Zealand. And he told me, because I used to throw it with the right roundhouse and mm -hmm. then spin with it. And he said, that's too much telegraphing. You're showing the guy I'm going to kick you because he'll lean back and then right. you come back. So he said, go southpaw and use your torso. So I'll give it away. Yeah. You throw your shoulder, your, your left shoulder from southpaw. To kind of, after a few right hands, so you kind of, I'm going to throw a right hand, and then spin. That spin right there, because, oh, hey, Taekwondo national yeah. champion, so you know. So that spin right there mm -hmm. generates the force, and I was able to knock down, the, knock down the guy with it. I never hit anybody with that. Yeah. <laughs> I hit Make the sure heavy, thing, heavy one, bag with that a lot. Exactly. Make sure they can't move. So yeah. I like to do it when they're against the fence or they're against the ropes, so that way they have nowhere to go or not, not as much space to, to move around. But if you're in the open, it's hard to land, land that. You know what's really uh, remarkably effective is mm -hmm. uh, that Raymond Daniels side kick to jump spinning back yeah. kick. I can do it on the bag. Yeah, on I can the do it on the bag well. too. I, I definitely have did it in sparring before, but when I saw um, Rick Rufus, with the, one of his first fights, mm. it was a really important fight with a Thai champion. Okay. Where he was fucking him up in the first round. We played it back because it was a really interesting moment. I think on YouTube it's labeled as the most important fight in kickboxing. Huh. And what it was was the first fight where we got to see Rick Rufus in his prime face a Thai champion. And yeah, this yeah. dude, and Rick was winning in the beginning, and one of the things that he hit him with, he did, he did that touch side kick, spin back kick in the air. This yeah. is it, the fight that changed history. Is this uh, Lawrence Kenshin as well? Yeah, yes. Lawrence. Uh, that guy's a treasure. Love if his you, work. Yeah, go yeah. Uh, Google him uh, or, uh, or check out yeah. his videos on YouTube. He's got so many he awesome He and Jack breakdowns. Slack, and I like the way mm -hmm. they kind of work off each other as well. Like a lot of these guys, they're not really um, – there's no competition. They're all working through, together for, for, well, for the Well, they're all very good. important. And Robin Black as well. Like yeah, all these guys. He's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> what I really love about Lawrence, though, is that you know he breaks down things and shows them in slow motion, as is Brenda Dorman and, and Jack Slack. There's a lot of these guys that do well, this. What weight was that? <sighs> I don't lighter. remember. Yeah. I don't remember how much Rick weighed. I know he went yeah. up to like 200 pounds, but I think he started out in the 60s or 70s okay. at the yeah. most. This Thai light. guy's pretty thick. <laughs> Check out the pants. <laughs> yeah, well, he didn't understand how to deal with the leg kicks. Yeah. Like, this was, this was what chewed him up. Yep. But early in the fight, I think in the first round, see, this, what this is showing is how the tie starts taking over with the leg kicks. Mm. But I think in the first round, he hit him with that side kick, uh, jump spinning back kick to the face and really hurt him. Yeah. So this is uh, Lawrence's breakdown. Instead, this is, this is just going to show how he lost. Yeah, yeah. See how he tried to throw that body kick and checked, he got checked. checked. Yeah. yeah. Nice four by two though. Hit him with the ooh, yeah. He, nice. he, oh, he hurt him with that left yeah, hand. Yeah, four by two. Yeah, he dropped. Oh shit. Beautiful. Yeah. No, Rick had his moments in this fight mm. for sure, and um, it showed just what a dangerous striker he was. But we didn't. We just really didn't know back then about the leg kicks. Mm. So they, interesting. The ties, they're the ones. Huh? Yeah. I felt some tie guys. Their legs. Their legs literally feel like just concrete. Yeah. You know they're broken I mean? down from yeah. years. And mine are all kicked. right. Like it feels like a Stegosaurus is back. But sometimes when you feel it, it's like steel. Dude, I felt so... The first time somebody kicked me in my leg, I felt so vulnerable. Because yep. I couldn't believe how easy it was. 100%. I was, the fir my first thought was, God damn it, I have to recalibrate everything I thought about fighting. Yeah, I fought a karate guy, a Kyokushin guy, uh, on maybe two hours notice. Because my opponent decided, at the weigh-ins, he's like... I'm not fighting him. And just fuck <laughs> up. <laughs> what but did whatever. you do that made Nothing. him say that? I, I'm black. I was ah! just like, <laughs> <laughs> he was ah! like, nah. And then, like, this guy, ah! Jamie Eads, who I've fought, I think, four times now. So he came over to corner one of his teammates, and he was a national Kyokushin champion. He was like, I'll fight him. Cool. Jump in the ring, and this padded fight, everything. Uh, yeah, two leg kicks in. I was like, whatever, I can keep going. And then by the fourth one, I remember like, ooh, okay. 
don't do that again. And then from there, it was too late. That was only in the first round. And he <sighs> ate my legs. He ate my legs. And I remember for about three weeks after that fight, walking was just, I didn't want to walk. Every time I'd be like, can you pass me this? Or just like crawling places. And oh. I would hate walking. But fun fact. For how many, How long? About three weeks. Maybe two, Ooh. two and a half, three weeks after that fight. And it's just, you know, your legs are dead, heavy, filled with blood, bruised. Oh. And it's just any little movement because your knees are swollen as well. Sharp pains. Oh, I hated it. Fucking hated it. How long it. did it take before you recovered? Probably, yeah, about three weeks, four weeks. I healed quick. Like, honestly, it's weird. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, I don't Do you know, know why. Randy Couture, when he fought Pedro Hizzo, needed six months of rehab. Shit, six months. Six months, Damn. son. Because he still has a dent in his leg, yep. apparently, from, from that Pedro. fight. Shit. Dude, Pedro gave a dent to Kevin Randleman, too. Shit. I never saw anybody kick Thick a bag guys. like Pedro. Yeah. I, and, or kick a people. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I was yeah. at Beverly Hills Jiu-Jitsu in, like, yeah. the, the, the mid-'90s. And mm. Boss Rutten was running it back at the time. And Pedro Hizzo was over there. Is and Marco Huas. The dude. He had they, they had this big ass two hundred pound fucking heavyweight and Pedro Hizzo 